Today we are just going to, you know, continue the discussion on times and seasons, which Brother Ibuta started on Sunday. And um, I strongly believe that, you know, that's the word of the Lord for us in this time, especially this 2023. And I'm trusting the Lord that as a body, we all will key into that word and we would be able to flow with the Lord's times and the Lord's seasons. So we will have no cause to miss the time of our visitation, individually and corporately, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So today we're just going to be saying one or two things in that respect. And we trust the Lord that we'll be able to pray. Amen. So we are going to be talking about times and seasons. Praise the Lord. And uh, we'll just look at some principles with regard to that as it applies to us believers. And we are trusting the Lord that our hearts will be stirred up in Jesus' mighty name. So three important things we are going to look at with respect to times and seasons. Three important principles to have in our minds or to keep behind our minds or keep in our minds as they say. Number one principle is that life has times and seasons. God has ordained life to have times and seasons. And in Genesis, I think it says, As I live, saith the Lord, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Praise God. Or as the earth remaineth, sorry, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. So principle number one, we must understand that life has times and seasons. Life has times and seasons. For some time now, we've been talking about laws you know, we've been talking about the law of the Spirit. We've been talking about, you know, even laws of nature and how important laws are. One of the important laws in life is that life has times and seasons. Praise God. And God has ordained it that way. And God respects it for he does all things according to the counsel of his own will. We take our reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And we read from verse 1. It says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Amen. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rain and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Praise God. These are the principles of life. There is a time and a season. We are going to look at also verse 11 of that same chapter. And it reads, He, that's God, He had made everything beautiful in His time. 
Also he had set the world in their hearts, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Now when, you know, we usually say this scripture, but if you read other translations, um, you know, we usually say God makes all things beautiful in his time. But the, the, the proper rendering in, in its time, not in his time, in its time. Praise God. So let's look at the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation says, God has made everything beautiful for its own time. Praise God. For its own time. So the beauty in, in, in its time. You know, we always say God makes all things beautiful in his time. That's in God's time. But the rendering is in its time. In other words, when it is his time, it is beautiful. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's beauty is set in time. Amen. God's beauty, the beauty, the glory of God is set in time. When it is time to be glorified, it is time. The Bible says in an accepted time, Jesus appeared. Praise God. Amen. In an acceptable time, he appeared. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. So in its time, he makes it beautiful. Hallelujah. He doesn't make it beautiful in, when it's not its time. In its time. Not in his time. In its time. Praise God. So in Galatians chapter 6, Paul says, We should not be wearing well-doing. For in due season, praise the Lord. Not in God's season. In due season. So there is a season for whatever you are doing. When that season comes, the fruit will come out. Hallelujah. Amen. So the program of God is set in time. There are times and seasons. Hallelujah. Jesus says, No, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. That is the Lord saying in his day, I have to do it now. Because the night cometh when no man can walk. So even in the beauty of God, is constrained in time. Hallelujah. So God makes it beautiful in its time. Amen. You know, you see like the, you know, if you travel abroad or something, you know, like even on TV, you see when it's time for the lilies to grow or the plants to grow. You know, two days ago, you know, where, where we are staying, the, the grass, when it gets dry, it's like the knot, it dries out, you know. So the first rain came, the second rain came. I was saying in my heart, I said, the grasses will soon come alive. And this morning when I woke up, lo and behold, the greens began to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In its time. He makes it beautiful. So you don't have to struggle. That's what he's trying to tell us. It's not a matter of struggling. It's a matter of understanding the times and the seasons. Amen? So that you are not trying to harvest when it's time to sow. And then you start to grumble. Or you're not trying to sow when it's time to harvest. So we must understand God's times and seasons. For the glory is in the time and season. Praise God. There is a season for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Okay, we move on. So, first, we must understand the first principle. Life has times and seasons. Amen. The second thing we must understand is that not, we must note. Let me actually use that word. Not, the second thing we must note is that when we do not understand the times of season and seasons, it is a recipe for ruin. When we don't understand the times and seasons, it is a recipe for ruin. Praise God. In other words, when we miss the times and seasons, there is a time to pray and there is a time not to pray. Praise God. This may surprise you, but I'm going to tell you a testimony. One time, you know, when I was in Christ Chapel many years ago, I used to be the choir leader. And usually they had the, con the convention was in Port Harcourt this time. And when I got to church one day, the pastor told me, he said, John, we would love to go, but we don't have any money. I said, we don't, we don't just have the money. Neither did I have the money, but something told me, you are taking your team. And I said, sir, we will go. I had not, I didn't have a dime. I didn't have a dime. So we started rehearsing. We started rehearsing with, you know, extra rehearsals and all that. As the time drew closer, the fear grew higher. I began to pray. 
Look, I prayed, I prayed. But a time came when I had an assurance in my spirit. Go. It's good to go now. But fear in my head did not allow me to stop praying. One day I, one day I knelt down to pray. I heard somebody say to me, get up. I heard somebody say, get up. So I, got, I stopped the prayer. I got up. And we arrived for Takot. Managed to put small money together. Hired one bus. We arrived. Not a dime from church. I had accommodation. Not even, in fact, I can still remember the money that I had for dinner was, could only buy us one loaf of bread. We were like 30 in number. I said, ah! I said, Lord, you said we should go this thing, you know? huh? It's becoming very critical. And God, guess what? We got to Patakot around 6. I began to wonder. So, when we get home, if he's sleeping, that's not a problem. People can sleep anywhere. You know, we're young people that time. I said, what will these people eat? Ah. But as we got closer, they now said, come to church. Don't you? We should come straight to church because the service has started. So when we got there, worship was going on. While other people were worshiping, my hands were up. My whole mind had, that is, I was literally shaking. Wonder, I said, God, how am I going to feed these people this night? Deep in my heart, faith, in my head, my mind was running helter, skelter, helter, skelter. As I was closing my eyes, I must be sincere. Look, I can't, you know that type of experience, you remember it very well. As I was, I was, you know, when they lift, I was lifting up my hand, my mind was somewhere else. Somebody just tapped me like this. He says, Brother Henshaw, we have accommodation for you. In fact, the cold water that came on my body... <laughs> If you see the kind of hotel these people carried us to, they didn't invite us. We were not invited. You know, that night we ministered. If you see the, that is the luxurious hotel. Hey! I said in my heart, you are a great God. <laughs> if you see the food, hey! If you see the food, of course they didn't know. They, 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 would, they said, go, you know, they, they. I said, God, you are marvelous. You are marvel. If you see the sumptuous meals from, we were there three or four days, well taken care of. I said, God, you are a great God. <laughs> there is a time to pray, there is a time to seize. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So sometimes when you miss the time and the season, you know, you make things difficult for God. You limit the hand of God because the glory is in the time and the glory is in the season. Praise God. Okay. We look at an example of that. Let's look at um, still Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Sorry, I have to be jumping. Where are we now? That's Ecclesiastes now. Chapter 8, okay. And I think verse 6. He says, let's take from verse 5 because that's important to talk about. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. When and how. Very important. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. Praise the Lord. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? Praise God. But a discerning heart can know. Hallelujah. But a discerning heart can know. Because there is time and there is, there is time and judgment. The misery of man is great upon him. I was telling some people a testimony of a very close friend, a young brother. His father was, you know, quite wealthy in the town in those days. And he was telling us, because when I went to visit him, and they were living in one uncompleted building in Uyo, knowing the kind of people his father used to work with, I was a little bit, you know. So he told me the story, that there was a big contract, you know, I don't know whether, I can't remember the name, but there was this man who used to do carpets those days. Is it uh, Jackson? There was or something like, 
devils also. So they, that was the man's, you know, that was his father's clique. And there was this big contract. So the father mopped up all, sold houses, mopped up things. The mother kept on saying, honey, don't go. Just do, you know, but oh, this is breakthrough business and all that. And he put the money into that business. And everything collapsed. And as of the time I was talking, the man was even an old man. The family had not recovered. They were living in an uncompleted building. Praise God. When you don't understand the time and season. Because there is no heart to discern. Praise God. No discerning hearts. Misery. You know. One time the Lord was talking to me about Psalm 91. He says, the sun shall not smite thee by day. And he made me to understand that the daytime by the, 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 you know, the noonday is when the, your life is at its brightest. Like you see some people, their stars are rising. And then suddenly, for some reason, it's, they are cut down. That's why I always warn you. I say, you know what? When you have an anointing over your head, if Satan did not stop you from becoming born again, the next thing is a wrong husband or a wrong wife. That's the truth. Those are things older Christians told me. I nearly saw it in my own experience. Left not for the mercy of God. And it has not changed. We must be very watchful. Praise God. There is a time and season for every purpose. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. So when we see misery coming, sometimes it's not because of anything. Sometimes it's because we are not discerning. We are not discerning. And you know one thing about time and purpose is that what you do today can affect you 20 years from now. Your missing the time and the purpose now can affect you 20 years, 30 years to come. That's the reality about life. You know? It, the, the effect of that thing, you can begin to see it. it. It may not happen today, today. But you begin to see it later on. Like I was telling the, some young people, I said, you know what? Some people say, oh, I don't have money. Uh, well, you see them today, they, cannot, they are not educated, they have nothing. And they say, when you're talking with them, they say, my father did not have money to go to send me to school. But they won't tell you that when they were young, one uncle came and carried them to say, come and live with me. And as you went to live with that uncle, that uncle said, go to school. But stubbornness in the head will not allow them to settle down. They say, eh, they are disciplining me too much. Eh, they pack their load, they go back to the village. They won't tell you that one. When That was the opportunity God was opening for them to become something in life. They won't tell you that one. Praise God. So every time God is extracting people, putting in people's families so that what your father could not do, because it doesn't really matter. God will put people that can do it. But you need to understand that this place that I have come is my time and my season. Praise God. If you stay there and humble yourself, you will not be bothered about whether your father was born with silver spoon or bronze or iron. That's the truth about it. Praise God. But no, they won't stay. Eh, they, they, eh, you know, and all that. They'll come, they do all kinds of things, they pack their load, they go back to the village, then they go and be either farmer or hunter or something. So that is it. A lot of times, God brings people, help people. You know, if you go there, humble yourself and say, then they can't even write their name. 15 years, 20 years later. Of course, who will employ them? Then you see them begging for every day, please, uncle, send me this, send me that. Then when you don't know, people say, oh, oh, they're poor family, they couldn't send their child to school. We need to understand some of these things. Praise God. Sometimes young people, you need to go and join up somewhere where you can learn some things and learn to be disciplined. Learn to be disciplined. If I knew what I knew now, it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't take me so long to build up a structure. The kind of structure, it wouldn't have taken me that long. Praise the Lord. So when you ask me today, I want to join business, I go and look for where they are, work, where they are doing that type of business. Go and serve there. If they give you transport, it's alright. As long as you have a roof over your head and you can find food to eat in your father's house, go and stay there. Go and walk. Praise God. Because it can take a long time. It can take a long time. Hallelujah. For he knoweth not that we shall be. You don't know how it's going to come out when you miss your time and season. Very important. Let's look at Luke 19.41. 
He says, and when he was come near, he beheld the city. So even nations can miss their time and seasons. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou had known, even thou, at least in this thy day, forget about the ones that your fathers killed the prophets and all the things that happened in the past, but in your day, in your own time, there is always a visitation in your own time. Let's forget about the past. Jesus says, at least this one, because they had missed a lot. The children of Israel had missed a lot. Prophets sent to them, they will kill them, all kinds of things. But Jesus was saying, at least, even if it's in this your day. The things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. In other words, there is no heart to discern it. That's what he's trying to say. No heart to discern it. No heart to understand that this is the season, is your time. And you know the funny thing with times and seasons, they can come in such disguise, in a, in a very disguised way, if I may use that word. It doesn't look, it doesn't always look like it. Especially the sowing times don't look like it. They don't look like it. You see one man with Roman slippers moving around the street, preaching and all that, but that is the season. Because it is blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So we continue. He says, saying, if thou had known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thy enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side. And they shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not, Thou discernest not the time of thy visitation. Praise God. So when you don't discern that time, the effects of the... You know, now, if Jesus didn't say it, we probably would not know. Of course, we know that this happened 70 years after Jesus had died. 70 AD. Until 1948. Almost 2,000 years. Till 1948. Israel was not a nation. All you will hear is the Jews in Europe, the Jews in America, the Jews in Asia, the Jews in Africa. That's all. There was no map. Can you imagine that if you were born in 1935, if you are looking at the global map, you won't see a nation called Israel. That's what means. That's what it means. If you were born in, maybe like my father then, 1924, you won't see Israel in a map. Just like if somebody tells you, where is, uh, where is Nenevi? Where will you see Nenevi in the map? You can only know by history. They say, okay, around this side. Or if they say, where is um, the, the region of the Philistines? They will say, okay, maybe by history, this side. Have you seen any nation called the nation of uh, Philistine? Wiped out completely. Left not for the power of God and the word of prophecy that has gone to bring them back. Because God says, I will gather them together and make a nation out of it. You will not, that Israel has come back to the map. You will see it. It will not be, in fact, a generation will come, they will not even be talking of that type of thing. You will just be hearing Jews scattered all over the place. So when you miss it, it can be disastrous. How many generations of Jews lived without knowing that we had a land? How many generations of Jews? You know, when Jesus was carrying the cross, the women were crying. Hey, hey, hey. He says, women, weep not for me, weep for yourself and for your children. There was a man called Jesus of something before, you know, there was some, this thing. In fact, he even had a coin. He even had his name on a coin. I've forgotten his name, you know, when there was war with the Romans. Even defeated the Romans as it were. They even had a coin. I was watching it on one of the documentaries. When the Romans retreated and gathered again, exactly they put themselves around, collapsed the city completely. Collapsed it completely. Can you imagine that time, you know, till, till now? So, brethren, it's really important. It can be disastrous when we miss our time and season. I want to believe that in this time of visitation, the Lord will have us understand the times and seasons so that we don't lose out. We don't lose out. Amen. Hallelujah. Then let us, okay, we've quoted John 9. It says, 
I must walk. Let us go to Galatians chapter 6. I think I had even said that before. But let's look at Galatians chapter 6. Because I want us to do a little bit of praying by the grace of God. And verse 9. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Praise God. There is a due season. Amen. Jesus says in I think in the in the in Mark. Says a man went, cast seed, you know, sleep, he sleeps, he wakes up, he know it not how. And then the seed begins to grow. First of all, the, the blade and all that. And then the harvest comes and he put it for the sickle. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Finally, the third thing we must know. I'm going to recap so that we have it in mind. One, life has times and seasons. That's a principle. We can't change that. The second thing we've said is that we must understand the times of our seasons. If not, that is a recipe for ruin. The third thing we must have behind our minds is that it is not in man to know his way. Jeremiah 10, 23. Jeremiah prayed. He said, Oh Lord, it is not in man to know his way. Praise God. It's not by sense. Man naturally doesn't understand the way to go. With all the inventions, with all the science, with all the technology and all that, the problems are getting bigger than the solutions. Praise God. It is not in man. I'm saying that so that you can understand that what we are talking about is something that God gives to somebody. Praise the Lord. God gives to somebody. Solomon prayed a prayer. He says, oh, that you will give me a discerning heart. That I will be able to judge between good and evil. And to lead your people. And the thing say, the Bible says, and the thing pleased the Lord. That's the man. Remember, this Solomon that was praying this prayer was not a fool. If you go back a little, even David, before David died, David said to his son, he says, I know that you are a wise man. But Solomon did not see himself as a wise man. Because that type of wisdom, that's not what he was looking for. He was looking for the divine one. He was looking for the impartation of God. Praise the Lord. In fact, when the case came up between the one lady to say you are like an angel of God. Praise God. I read about a man in the scriptures, you know, uh, Ahitophel. You know? So as I was reading, I got to a place where David prayed. This was some years ago. I got to a place where David prayed. Say, Lord, um, is it frustrate the counsel of Ahitophel? I now ask myself, what type of man? That's, I had not reached the place where... <laughs> so, what type of man is this that David will pray, God frustrate the counsel of Ahitophel? As I read down, I saw the answer. He said Ahitophel's counsel was as the counsel of God. Where is God? Amen. When he told David what to do, David, um, David's son what to do, the man went and gathered his house and killed himself. That is, you are so sure of your counsel that if they don't take it, you know what is going to come, you go and die. Arrange your house, you go and die. So, when David heard According to scripture that Ahitophel was in Absalom's camp, he had to pray to God. That's how impartation of gifting can be. Praise God. The man understood it. And you know what the Bible says? He says that God made one man so that they did not take heed to the good counsel of Ahitophel. <laughs> the good counsel, <laughs> that is... <laughs> You would, in fact, you must, you have to respect the scripture, the, the, the language. This is to wipe out God's anointed, though, but the Bible says that that counsel called it a good counsel. In other words, it would have worked. But God brought another person that confused Absalom's mind. He said, no, 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 don't go that way. Go this other way. The man knew that the thing is over. Praise God. So a man can possess such counsel. I always wondered why he decided to go to Absalom and didn't follow the Lord's, you know. Because he, was, he must have been a valuable person to David. I don't know what really happened. So we are going to look at Solomon's prayer and then we are going to pray. No, before we do that, please. Let's look at Psalms 32, 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. 
I will guide thee with my own eyes, with my eyes. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Now, I want you to look at that scripture closely. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, or as the mule, which have no understanding. So, a, 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 a essential part of guidance is the spirit of understanding. An essential part of guidance of a discerning heart is understanding. And God says, I will guide you. So what, when he says, I will guide you with my order, what he's trying to say is that I will give you understanding so that you can discern between good and evil. The time to do this and the time, good and evil, times and seasons. Praise God. But he says, be not like a moon. You know, this horse, they don't have understanding. You have to drag them. So anytime God wants you to do something, he has to arrange some circumstances to cast you to where he wants you to go. That's what's happening. Go here. You don't go. So bad things or something must happen so that he can push you. That's what he's saying there. Don't be like that. Every time God has to push you, push you. You put your hand in this business. He fails so that you will go back and stay <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Hallelujah. But before this, see Psalm 23 verse 7. Because that's the genesis of this instruction. It says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. That was David's, that was the prayer, the man was the declaration of this person. Before God's answer in verse, 20, verse 8. says, I will instruct thee. So this person was acknowledging God for who he is. And that's the same thing Solomon did. He says, Solomon acknowledged God for who he is. And said, Lord, you, there is no God like unto you. But see me, I'm a man without wisdom. Grant me wisdom. Same thing with spirit of this person. He acknowledged God and then God spoke to him. He says, I will direct you with my own eyes. Show you the way to go. Give you a discerning heart. Hallelujah. Like Ibrahim Buta was saying yesterday, there are some things you don't even bother yourself about. It may work for other people. That's one thing Christians must understand. Because the business has worked for you, that doesn't mean that that is the one that is for you. We, mu we must understand that. You know, when Jesus wanted to go to the, the, the brother says, ah, if you do this type of thing, go and show yourself to the world. Jesus said, no, your time is always, my time has not come. Hallelujah. Our life is in the spirit, brethren. So we are going to pray. Let's read 1 Kings 3.9 quickly and then we'll just begin to talk to the Lord. He says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Not a foolish one, not a foolish heart. An understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Praise God. Such kind of prayers please the Lord. When a person is desirous to have understanding, to be able to discern times and seasons, wrong from right, such kind of things please the Lord. Hallelujah. James says that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He give it liberally. In other words, he doesn't say this one is this, this one. He just lets because wisdom is God's delight. Praise God. Wisdom is God's delight. For it is the glory of God to hide the matter, the honor of kings to search it out. Praise God. So we are going to begin to pray. Let's just begin to bless the Lord. You know, for me, this this is this is a strong prayer point for me. I've been you know, since Sunday, my heart has been, say, Lord, I want to have a discerning heart. When you have a discerning heart, you don't waste your time putting energy, running up. You know where to go, where not to go. You can judge. You know, I always tell my wife, I said, when, if, the, if some of us were in Jesus' shoes, where the corner, corner, corner questions the Pharisees used to ask him, with our legal way of thinking, they would have flawed us completely. 
bring the woman and keep her. Well, Moses said we shouldn't do it. You tell us what to do. You know, maybe we would have been saying the Bible says and all that. But there is a spirit of the world which can, you know, break through all those legal structures. He didn't know, you realize he didn't answer them according to what they wanted. Any of you that have not seen cast the first to all of them ran away. Praise the Lord. Let's begin to talk to the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm, 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 I'm in for a descending heart. Hallelujah. These are the kind of prayers that you, you, you fast. You know, you take a fast one week. Take a fast asking God.